You need a vacation. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to take a full four weeks off. And not only will you not be missed, your business will actually be better when you get back. I'm gonna give you the three types of 30 day vacations that you can choose from. And I'm even gonna give you my word for word email that I send to my leadership team before I leave for a vacation that makes this whole thing work. So if you think you can't take a long weekend off, much less a full 30 days, you definitely need to watch this video. If you don't know who I am, my name is Ryan Dice and my partners and I manage 17 companies across our $200 million holding group. But I still take at least one 30 day vacation every year in addition to a handful of week and two week vacations. And when I return, my companies are always better off than when I left them. And what I'm gonna show you now is how I do it and how you can do it too. Core principle number one is that rest is work. And I think that this is so incredibly important because as entrepreneurs, we don't really have an off switch. When you rest, you are working. And the example that I would give is really the difference between cows and lions. A cow grazes all day long. They just walk around all day long and all they do is graze and graze and graze. And so they're constantly working, but never really accomplishing all that much. Lions sleep and they're gonna laze around for 16 to 20 hours, but when they're active, you better believe they're active. In fact, the average work week of a lion is around 20 hours. And I believe that the same is true for us as entrepreneurs. We are lions, we are not cows. And so we shouldn't expect that we need to sit there and graze on work all day long. When and where did you come up with your biggest breakthrough ideas. My guess is you're going to say they were while you were in the shower or while you were on a walk or while you're reading a book or while you were on vacation. The point is the biggest breakthroughs almost never occur while we're in the process of quote unquote doing work. And that is why for us as entrepreneurs and business leaders, rest equals work. Core principle number two, distance creates perspective. Now, I don't know about you, but I know when I'm stuck on a project, having a hard time kind of working through a particular issue, I like to go for a walk. Now, when I'm really, really stuck, I'll take a day off. And when I'm really, really, really stuck, I take a vacation. It's hard to read the label from inside the bottle. Core principle number three, vacations are a forcing function. What you're gonna see when we get into this is just the act of telling your team that you're going to be gone for 30 days It is enough to kind of make everybody perk up and go, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, in that case, what all do we need to figure out before this person is gone? These forcing functions can be very galvanizing to an organization and they can be positive even if they're driven by negative circumstances. The more valuable you are to your business, the less valuable your business is. So. The first step to demonstrating that your business can run and scale without you is to get out of the business and that's exactly what a 30 day vacation is gonna allow you to accomplish. And, and for us, this isn't theory, this is fact. I mean, one of our clients, a good friend of ours, Josh Taylor, uh, the first time he did this, he let us know that he set the goal of moving his entire family to Costa Rica for a full two months. And what was great is when he got back, he found that the business wasn't just fine, that they had actually broken sales records. And my favorite part about this whole story is that the next year, he did it again. Now, there are a couple of rules that you need to make sure that you abide by if you're gonna do this 30 day vacation the right way. Rule number one is you need to block out at least four consecutive weeks. Now, as you're about to see, you don't have to technically be gone all four of those weeks, but I do want you to at least block out four consecutive weeks. Rule number two, book the vacation three to nine months out. We've actually found that six months really is that sweet spot. But the reason that you wanna book it a few months out is not just so that you can prep for it and make sure that it's gonna be an amazing vacation, but you also do wanna let your team know with enough time so that they can make the adjustments to make sure that they're prepped and ready. Rule number three, no meetings. Absolutely, positively, no meetings while you're on vacation. That aligns with rule number four, which is no email. So while you're on vacation, no email. You wanna make sure if you have an executive assistant that they're in their inbox, they're responding, letting people know. Similarly, rule number five, no Slack. Get the heck out of Slack. Remove it from your phone. Don't log in, okay? Stay out of it. Rule number six, no special projects. This is important because while you're on vacation, remember we don't have an off switch, your brain's still going to be working. And if you wind up getting some work done and doing some cool things, especially if it's some of those, you know, important but non-urgent tasks, that's great. I don't want you to commit to getting anything done. I've seen people go on 30 day vacations and announce the team, hey, while I'm gone, I'm going to do all this work. That's not a vacation, okay? Rule number seven, one emergency contact person. Now this one's important because fires do flare up. And so it is important that there is some person at the company who you make it clear to everybody involved, if you need to reach me, 
go through this person. All right, so now that you know the principles, you know the rules, let's get into the step-by-step. -step. I've got five steps for you, starting with step one, which is to choose your vacation dates. Now there's three types of 30-day vacations that you can take. Option one is the good option, and this will be referred to as the one-to-one -one vacation. You're going to work remotely or part-time for one week, then you're going to actually leave and be totally unavailable for two weeks, and then you're gonna ease back in for one week before you officially return for work. So as far as everybody is concerned, you're off for four, but you're still there that first week. You're still checking email, you're still checking Slack. Ideally, you're not attending any meetings, but you're still around. Then you do, in fact, take two weeks off, and then you've got that other buffer week on the end where you're kind of coming back, you're checking back in. Option one is really good if you're doing this for the first time. Option two, we would say is the better option. This is where you do take the full 30. You take the full, four weeks off, you leave when you say you're gonna leave, you come back when you say you're gonna come up, come back. Option three is my favorite. This is the one that I do, this is what you should aspire to do. One for one option. And this is where you work remote or part-time the week before you leave, then you take a full four week vacation and then you ease back in for one week before you officially return to work. So in this case, you're basically blocking off six weeks. Step two is to actually send the vacation announcement email to your leadership team, and it is this email that really makes the entire thing work. So I'm gonna show you, hey all, I wanna give you a heads up that I'm gonna be out of the office for four weeks. During this time, I don't plan to attend any meetings, virtually or otherwise, nor will I be checking email, logging into Slack. Uh, if there's a major emergency, contact name will know how to reach me, but the goal is to avoid the emergency option. Now, if you can see here, these are the same rules that I give you. You're basically making the rules known to your team. Uh, you're also letting them know who that emergency contact is going to be. Uh, to that end, I want us to start planning now for how the company is going to thrive while I'm away. So please reply, and this is important, uh, with what, if anything, you think is likely to break when I'm gone. Now, this piece is important because you're involving them, you're engaging them in this process, you're making it collaborative. Not only will this exercise ensure I actually enjoy my vacation, but as a side benefit, it will force us to build some much needed systems while also creating additional opportunities for many of you. I look forward to reading your ideas and mostly I look forward to eliminating me as the primary bottleneck in the company's growth. So. That is the email. Let's dig into why this email works and why I recommend that you pretty much send it as is with as limited change uh, as possible. So again, if we break it down the first bit, you're making it very, very clear that you're leaving. As entrepreneurs, as business owners, we often feel like we need to justify that we're going on vacation. You don't. No pomp and circumstance, no apologizing, no aw shucks. That's modeling the wrong behavior. Just say, hey, I'm gonna be out, I'm gonna be gone. Set the expectations, we're gonna set those rules. You've got the rules, they need to know the rules of engagement. Um, but this is big, again, we're going to involve them in the process, and more importantly, we're making it about them. We're making it crystal clear that this is gonna be good for all involved. Step three is to process the reply. So after you send this email, hopefully you're gonna start getting some replies from people on the team. You simply wanna make a list of all those critical tasks and processes um, and just kind of begin the work of documenting them so that they can be handed off to someone uh, while you're gone or maybe handed off forever. Now I wanna kind of make a point. There really are three types of critical task. Type number one are the things that you need to do ahead of time because really you're the only one who can do it. So for example, when I went on my 30 day vacation this last summer, I batch recorded five of these YouTube videos ahead of time so that I wouldn't miss a week. Type number two, these are the things that can just not happen while you're gone. So what I'm essentially suggesting that you do here is to run what we refer to as a stop test. So you're not deciding right here now that you're never going to do this thing again. You're simply saying, I'm not gonna do it while I'm gone, and you're gonna find out, did anybody miss it? What are the things that maybe just don't need to happen? It's a good test to see if they need to happen at all. The third type, and this is my favorite type, are the things that can and maybe even should be handed off to someone else. So I wanna briefly talk about how to document handoff critical tasks. So number one is to actually do the task. We want to make sure that when we're documenting, we're documenting while we do the task. So do the task and document while you do. Ideally, this can be done through a video capture tool like Loom, five to 10 steps of how to do it. Once you've performed this initial documentation, do it again, and this time do it kind of blindly following your own steps. This is where you're gonna see some gaps and you're gonna find some holes that can be plugged. Once you've done that, field test it. So have the person who will do it when you're gone 
start to do it and observe them and, and ask them, what did we miss? Tweak and adjust based on the field test and then hand it off to the new owner, ideally before you leave. And here's a beautiful thing. If you do this right, what you may find is that many of these tasks can be handed off before you ever go on vacation. And when you come back, they never return to you. This is what I mean about this being the ultimate forcing function and creating new opportunities for your team members. Step four is to use this as an opportunity to kickstart your operating system build out. Now, this one is optional. This is the perfect forcing function. In fact, with a lot of our clients, we encourage them to send out this 30-day vacation announcement so that it becomes that, that perfect forcing function. Now, if you have no idea what I mean by an operating system, I'm going to drop a link uh, to a case study video that I made. Step five, and this is the fun one, is to actually take the vacation. And again, no meetings, no email, no Slack, no special projects, just have fun. All right, so to close this thing out, again, I am able to take a 30-day vacation every year because I have something that most business owners don't have, and that is an operating system that allows my business to run and scale without me. If you would like to see how we build operating systems in our client and portfolio companies, I want you to check out a link that I dropped in the description for our $200 million operating system case study report. With that said, again, take a vacation. You deserve it. You earned it. Your business is going to be better for it when you do. Let me know how it went.